Hello there. Second video in the PrintShift 3.0 full build series, full instructions. In the first video, we built the Prusa Mini itself. In this video, we're going to add the thing that makes PrintShift unique, a conveyor belt onto the Prusa Mini's bed. So, if you have not watched the last video, if I want to check it out, what we did is build the pretty Prusa. What we did was build the Prusa and printed out these beautiful parts on our fresh machine. This is always a good idea to start with a working printer. That way, if there's any errors, any wonky parts, you know that the machine is working well. Test before you run. So, I've assembled the parts into a kit. We printed all these blue plastic parts last time. We have our two drive rollers. We need to replace the uh, heat bed cable cover. This is just slightly shorter than the stock one. More room for the belt. We're using these standoffs here to lift the belt up from uh, six millimeter up to ten millimeter. These are the parts for the drive roller, brass bushings to let it roll. These are the parts for the idler roller, including a uh, tensioning system. And we're also going to be replacing the stock uh, bed screws with some nice new ones that are a little more durable than the ones that Prusa ship. So probably don't need to do this, but I like to use that to loosen the belt and add new stuff, so I feel like it's a good idea. Let's get started. First thing, the Prusa Mini should be unplugged. We're not going to do any electrical work, but still think it's a decent idea. First real step is we are removing the bed screws. We're going to remove the top three and the bottom three of these guys. This uses a T10 Torx driver. We are not going to reuse these. They're just very stubby. Do not like the center row we're going to leave as stubs. Just gonna make sure they're nice and tight. Now we need to flip this guy over and remove all of the... Actually gonna remove these guys just for ease of access that we can do everything from the top. We're gonna be putting back these three just because they don't need to be messed with. Yeah, so set that back. Remember this has magnets on it so it'll stick in place. Next what we're doing is removing all of these standoffs. That was nice and loose. So what we're doing now is we're clearing a path for the belt. For obvious reasons, we can't have spikes in the center. We want the belt to roll around the top and the belt will actually pass inside these screws to go around. So the belt is not quite as wide as the Mini itself. It's basically as wide as these guys will allow it to be. So good a time as any to swap this part out. You'll notice our part is basically just shaving off three millimeters from the Prusa's original part. But really only a slight difference. However, it means we can get the belt through. These parts, what, the third print on this actual machine. It's just fun to have them upgrade themselves. All these dandoffs are too short. These guys all need to come off. And generally just get them loose with any sort of pliers. I'm using some parallel jaw pliers. Definitely not needed. And after all, we're not going to use these parts again. So even if they do get marred, it's okay. We're replacing each one with a 10 millimeter standoff instead of the six millimeter that it comes with originally. So we're just giving ourselves a little bit of extra room to run the belt. And these will be tightened later, and tight is good enough for now just to get them in place. All I need to do the back row and the front row. Now that we have all these guys in place, the next step is installing the drive roller. The drive roller is held in place by these standoffs, so clamp right around there. And so we got the brass bushings, we'll drop right in. The rod is going to stick out both sides of this guy. There we go. And we have a shaft collar that goes on this side. I'm not going to put it on especially tight right now because we use it to position the shaft itself later on. There's a drive roller almost sorted, one part missing. We need to add some EPDM sleeve. So we're going to cut off a lot of this. This is a foam rubber that will give the motor some grip on the drive or on the belt itself. Just need a little fiddly to get this guy on there. Once you get it moving, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting it down. And that is a drive roller with enough grip that it'll actually move the belt. I think we might as well put the spider on there now, to, or just so that it locks the belt in place. So this is your split shaft coupler. Half is going to go on the motor to drive this, the other half is going to go on here to, again, drive it. This red part is called the spider. We have a custom spider to help these guys lock together. We don't need this for now, so we're sticking it back in the kit. Go botch that right on the end there. We have a drive roller, nice and captive, that is all sorted. Next we have the idler roller. The idler roller is also the tensioner. So we have this tension body. I have the nut already in this one. Don't have the nut in this one yet. And we have our rod holder. The rod holder will live in there. Put an M5 screw there and you can push the rod out. So we have a nice pad for the tensioner. I'm just going to assemble this guy. And they should drop in place right on there. 
We get the nuts in, grab this guy, get the flats across. He's going to be shoved in and then pressed into place. So we're rotating the flats into place. There's a small cutout to accommodate it. It's generally a bit of a fiddle to get it in there flat. There you go. And then tightening these screws, we'll shove the idler out. So we can actually angle it and account for tracking of the belt as well. Final step is to reinstall the bed. So we're not going to reinstall these at all, just leave them blank. We're going to install these three screws loosely so that we can slide the belt on. So this is very loose, just tight enough that the screw is uh, in place. So this is also the procedure for changing the belt later. Loosen these three screws, remove these three screws, so that you can then lift up the front and slide the belt on. Usually just remove this tensioner block. Already have another video up of how to make nice continuous belts. Slide it into place. Should be a piece of cake. We we'll bend the roller black into place. This guy back on, also back into his place. Now you have a belt on there, nice and loose. We'll tension it later. First, we gotta tighten down these screws. Belt should still be pretty loose. We're gonna tighten down the remaining screws. Always make sure the belt is not bound up on something. So one thing probably not gonna show on camera, just too fiddly, is going back to the screws that are underneath these three and these three and tightening them down. Should not need a whole lot, but you'd rather have these screws come loose than these when you're trying to take things out. Before you tension the belt, stick your flexible steel sheet back in. Should be registered here, here, and you see there's a notch on the sides of this guy using a three millimeter. That is come up in the end of this video. We're gonna throw up a print and fire up a time lapse just to have something printed on the center of our belt. Now again, can go too tight. You should be able to drive the belt relatively easily by hand. Coupler is a little bit sharp. We'll take a look underneath what we're seeing on the belt itself. Do, 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 do. So underneath we have the tensioner, the belt itself running freely. That's probably a little too tight where we're straining the bed too much. But we're gonna load some filament and we'll get you guys set up on the bed itself for a decent time lapse. Conveyor belt installed. Next video we're going to install the motor. Video after that we're going to install the electronics to control everything and have a fully functional print shift machine. Happy printing guys. Enjoy the time lapse. PLA. Red PLA is what we had before, so we're going to keep with the red PLA.